She is the creator of the podcast Level Up Lodi. Fight, uh, <laughs> fight feelings, face <laughs> facts created in May 2021. She's a Chicago native, Chi Town stand up. Okay. <laughs> Gracing Nashville with my energy since 2020. She is 34, Christian, single for about nine months, no kids. So, you know, don't flood my DM, flood hers. <laughs> contact with her <laughs> very far so community funny. let's show some love to shay how are you doing today i am well i'm so excited to be here awesome awesome so with your introduction do you ever find yourself fumbling with with uh fight feelings face facts you know originally i did but like now it's just it rolls off my tongue it's so easy for me now because i'm used to saying hey everybody welcome to level up loading you know what i mean so i'm used to saying that but um yeah I kind of made it difficult on purpose. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, I like cool. the alliteration of all the Fs, you know, like I like, I kind of like that. Got you. Got you. Well, we have somewhat of a, I won't say controversial topic, but we're talking about uh, dating and sex and the benefits. Is it beneficial and dating and all this other good stuff in yeah. 2022? Cause I know it can be challenging. I've heard the stories. <laughs> Just be happy. You're not out here. <laughs> I was out here for a minute, but check this out, Shay. I was here for, I was out here at 40. Oof. Yeah. I can only imagine what you were like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> out here at 40. So you, you, you still got time. You good. I'm going to claim that. I'm going to claim it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into this. Is dating without sex beneficial? And if so, how? For me personally, I think that it really is. Um, it gives me the clarity that I need. Um, mm. It takes away a lot of the, you know, unnecessary confusion. I think that sex, people might not want to admit it, mm. but I do think that sex sometimes clouds our judgment. It, it just creates a lot of unnecessary confusion and it hurts you in a way because it, it allows you to kind of gloss over things that actually could be red flags. And so for me, with dating with a clear mind of knowing that, you know, sex is literally not on the table, um, for me, dating is a lot easier. It also eliminates the people who are not willing to, of course, respect your boundaries and um, kind of just go straight into they you know they're there for one thing type mm -hmm. of situation and so it kind of helps you to get those creeps out of the picture now don't get me wrong you know there are creeps that know how to pretend too you know so you have to be careful of that but yes to me it's absolutely beneficial i think that it's something that helps me to just have a clearer mind when i'm going into, into situations mm -hmm. I feel you because when I asked this question, I thought about how many times I've heard about this on social media mm -hmm. or even with people I converse with in person. And they say, in particularly with women. So here's just my pushback with that. I hear a lot of women say I can separate sex from my feelings. So how do you feel about that? Do you think it's just kind of individualized? Because to me, I would imagine, and I'm not a woman, so I'm just, this is just my opinion. Yeah. I'm like, as a woman, I think y'all are connected like sexually and, and mentally, I would imagine. But if you can separate sex from your feelings, uh, I think that Fight might- Fight feelings, face facts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree with you. And it took a lot of learning and unlearning for me to really understand how connected I really am with my sex. You, you get what I'm saying? Um, not just because of my religion, but just as a woman, like you said, um, I have had periods of my life where I did feel like I could separate them. Um, but I think that that was a lot of conditioning. I thought, I think that's a, the evolution of, of the world right now, um, unfortunately, we're going through this weird phase where the women of the world are kind of adapting to their their <laughs> their environments and they're shutting off some of the very important parts of 
being a woman, um, mm-hmm. like their like their emotions, like their feelings, like their femininity. And in my past, when I have thought that I was quote unquote able to separate that, I was really just fooling myself because mm-hmm. it's all connected. It's all connected. And and in this day and age, I don't want anybody touching me. Like literally, I will cringe <laughs> at the thought of that. Um, to have someone to touch me and not have a true connection and a true bond. Like I'm not, I'm not, not even just talking about sexually, like friends, family, mm-hmm. <laughs> don't touch me. I don't want anybody touching me. That is not, you know, doesn't make me any good. So. Yeah, but no, I, I agree. I feel you because I do think with, uh, and, and I'm not shaming women cause I'm not, and I said before, I ain't trying to police your body. So don't come for us in the comments. We just conversing because <laughs> people will come for you in a New York minute. You gotta say that, okay? <laughs> yeah, right. Because I, and I hear that so much. And then I hear what women saying, well, men are dogs. So I'm going to give them that same energy. And I'm thinking, so you're going to take away from who God made you to fit to the environment and to the way that somebody treated you. And and I always tell people, don't become who hurt you. So how can yes. you expect to find true love when you have become the person who hurt you? That's really? not even you. You didn't turn into the monster. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. But I, oh, go, ahead, I'm go sorry. ahead. No, go ahead. I just feel like I, I understand in a sense, just because I understand kind of how um, things adapt to try to protect itself. I mean, even in nature. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's going on, but ultimately is just causing more harm. Um, I think that women are trying to take back their power, but they're doing it in a way that is completely, um, what's the word, self-destructive in a sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, yes, protect yourself, yes, have a, a good grasp on your feelings and, you know, don't be so quick to just invest in somebody just because you kind of like them or they love bomb you or whatever, but still, you know, embrace the fact that you're a woman and that you do have emotions and that's what makes you special. That's what is, that's your light. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So do you think, now that we're here, I want to discuss this. So do you think that a lot of women who are who aren't able to operate in their femininity, do you think that that comes from maybe a lot of bad past relationships? Because I wanted to ask you about that as well, but do you think, because to me, being being feminine is the most beautiful thing in the world. Mm-hmm. To me, for a woman to be in her full femininity, for her to smile and you just like, and nothing sexual, it's just more of like a pleasant spirit. It's an aura. Yeah. 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 Um, I have in my past, like I said, thankfully, 34, I love that. I love my 30, 30 plus life. Mm -hmm. I really do. You know, I've done a lot of growing and healing, but I can say that I have had times where I was absolutely the opposite of feminine, you know, um, just from, I think a lot of it comes from having to be so independent, uh, and not really having a lot of reliable options as a helpmate and partner out here um and that's no shade to to men and just being honest in general Uh, but yeah it's like if you're dating and you're dating people who need your help versus of someone that is strong where you weaken you know you know things like that like it's not an actual mutual type of beneficial situation you kind of just coming in and, and mothering or helping in that way i think sometimes that can definitely activate that masculinity that take care of things that that hustle bustle go out and get it go get her energy which is nothing wrong with having i'm definitely not saying that because women you know we're bosses these days but our our like energy of trying to compensate for the lack of help can kind of push us into that. Uh, for me, now femininity is like so fun. And I think <laughs> I think I've discovered my femininity in a very weird time because 
people don't necessarily always like the the the, the attributes that come with femininity. Mm-hmm. You know, just being just being. Yeah. Not having to worry about doing or, you know, being overly uh, what's the word I want to use? Being overly like just overcompensating for certain things, you know what I'm saying? And so I think that it's kind of weird a little bit because now people are like, well, you you want to be independent, so open your own door. And it's like, no, I want you to open my door. Like I, I want you, I want to feel like I'm being cared for. I want to, you know, feel like you're actually protecting me like I like that feeling yes of course I'm a grown woman I I can open my own door I can make sure that I'm safe myself but I want you to do that like I want a man to do that for me Mm -hmm. so what you're saying is that men and women we need each other we do we need to stop stop acting like don't like it's ridiculous (laughs) Mm-hmm. I see so many think pieces about it and I'm like you're doing all this and we're literally on both ends I see the male perspective and I see the woman perspective and we're saying the same things we want the same exact things from each other and it's like why can't we collaborate and put those things together and make it work like it's ridiculous how much we're at war right now and it's like that's I think that's kind of frustrating for us out here in the dating scenes because I mean, I'm 30 years old, I'm 34 years old, you know? So it's like, my mindset is a little bit different than some of the younger, you know, people out here on the scene. Yeah, cause I'm sure you thought different than when you were 25 opposed to today. Absolutely. I could even say I thought different from 33, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Look, last week, I'm, I'm a evolving person. I, I, I take in information and I kind of, you know, adjusted and adapted to meet my needs. Mm-hmm. No, that's 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 beautiful. I love to hear that as far as uh, personal development and self growth. Because I was interviewing a lady the other day, and she mm-hmm. was saying how you want me to be feminine, but I have to do everything. She's like, I can't be feminine doing everything. That's not what femininity is. Right. It's she just was not. Like, she said, "If so, she said, so if you're gonna take help, take some of this load off of me, <laughs> then you get Whoa. a different version." She was preaching right there. I got a little chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I, I have a. I got to make sure I get that show up as well. So, most of your dating experiences have they been good or bad? Whew, you can um, keep it 100. You ain't got to say their names, but you can keep it a book. <laughs> I would say that overall, um, they've been interesting i would say good i would say good okay and i wouldn't say permanently good but good um i think that everything has a reason and a season and they serve their purpose for you know what they were supposed to teach me in those times and what i was supposed to learn from them um but i would say good overall i think that i have a certain aura about me where it's kind of hard to kind of hard to to do certain things to me like a lot of the horror stories and things that I hear and I'm like cringing like oh my god how, how did you make it through sis you know I hear so many different things I think I just have a kind of an aura where people I, I think I command respect you know mm. um I don't not to say that I haven't had my share my fair share of you know weirdos <laughs> but Overall, I I would definitely say good. I I think I get a a lot of respect. Um, Even when things don't necessarily work out, I'm able to still maintain that level of, you know, I'm I'm held in in high regards. Mm, That's what's up. So you don't really take L's, they just lessons. They're not, you don't take losses. You just, you just learn from them. I'm the ultimate W. So, I mean, (laughs) they might take an L, but... (laughs) I will never. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Because a lot of times people will take a, a, a bad dating experiences and say a dad a, 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 a bad dating experience and then just say all men are trash, right? Oh no. You know, it's just you know, I I, I seen a meme the other day where um this lady was I guess she was posting on social media like all men are trash, but her man was like laid up on her chest as she was typing away. <laughs> 
you know what? And the thing I, uh, the thing about that, all men are trash. I, I just, I'm sorry. For me personally, if I chose you, there was a reason why I chose you. So there's no, whether it lasted forever or it didn't. I chose you to be in my life for whatever reason. So there had to be some redeeming qualities. There had to be something, you know, good about you. So for me, I could never discount a man just because he wasn't a good fit for me. Doesn't mean that he was a trash man. It just means that he was not a good fit for me. And I'm okay with that. Like, I don't need to bash you just because our lives didn't align. You get, you get what I'm saying? I, I just don't. I don't adhere to that that way of thinking whatsoever. I love that. That's good because it's okay to go on a date with someone and for it to not work out. It's okay. It doesn't mean that that person was trash. It doesn't mean that this person was the worst man in the world. It was just <laughs> that it just didn't work for us. I think for some odd reason, we we believe that just because something didn't work out, we have to throw that person away. It's, it just didn't work. Yeah. You know, um, go ahead. I, I actually, I mean, this might be a red flag to some people, but in my mind, I still am, am cordial, at least with the majority of the people who I've talked to. Like, I met some amazing people, like, not necessarily amazing for me in my life and what I wanted, mm -hmm. but like, I've met some amazing people who I'm still cool with to this day, you know, and on a cordial level, of course, but I just, like you said, I don't feel like it's a reason to throw someone away just because we didn't run off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I feel that maturity in you. I feel like that's the mature piece where you like, you know what, it's all good. And who knows if you just being friends with somebody, they might just call you on the fly one day. They might have a business opportunity for you. They might have a job, you know, they might have something for you that can yeah. catapult your life. But because we throw people away, Discarded. you never know. Yeah. You can miss those opportunities that somebody else can present to you too. Absolutely. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, don't don't burn bridges. I know people believe in burning bridges, but it's like if you can be amicable, if you can be amicable. Right. If yeah. strong on the if. <laughs> yeah. They say it's, it, if if was a fifth, we'll all be drunk. Right. So I, I get it. Yes. What is the biggest mistake you see women make when dating? The biggest mistake I see them making and I've been guilty of myself <laughs> time or two. It's just people pleasing and not standing really strong on their standards and their boundaries. It's like they see a man or what, like whatever. I, you know, I'm not. I'm I'm talking heterosexual because that's my preference. But you know, we can apply it how it applies. Right. They see a man and they cling to him and they like him. He's fine or he's this or whatever on paper. Mm -hmm. And instead of them actually vetting and actually seeing if this man is a good fit for them and what they need and if they also are a good fit for the man they just adapt themselves to whatever this man wants to be so they, they become this <laughs> bot of taking the information that this man wants and conforming to it I see a lot of women just kind of like going over their own boundaries and betraying themselves you know Ultimately, to me, it's a betrayal of yourself when you don't respect and honor your own boundaries. And, you, and you know, I think that, unfortunately, a lot of women want relationships so badly and they want it to look a certain way as well. Been guilty, like I said, myself. Um, but they want it to look a certain way. So when they see someone who fits that picture or, you know, meets those quote unquote checklists, they're, they stop worrying about if this is a good person, if this is somebody who's actually going to feed, you know, my spirit. Is this somebody who I actually have the capacity to help? Am I actually a good match for this person? Mm -hmm. Instead, it's just like, he liked me, I like him, but we about to jump into bed and he mad and now I own him and can't nobody else talk to him. And it's just like, do you even know this person who you're so... Um, aggressively <laughs> guarding, mm -hmm. you don't even know what you're guarding. You don't even know if this man would 
nurse you back to health if you if you were sick. You don't even know if this man, um, you know, has your best interest at heart. You don't know if this man would be there for you if you had a family emergency or, you know, you don't know this man, but you're basically kind of, you see what you like. It looks good on paper. It's cute for Instagram. And, you know, he, he has the accolades that you might be looking for, but you don't actually know him. Mm. So yeah. A lot of times women will kind of acquiesce to, to fit what he like opposed. So they, they basically betraying themselves. Yep. For something. That, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. Cause I think that does happen a lot, a lot. Um, and then the scary, the funny thing about it is you with this person say six months to a year later, they're mm-hmm. like, you changed. It's like, well, this who I was all the time. It's just that I was being my Macy salesperson to get you. And that is the scary part about dating. <laughs> that is the most scariest part about dating right now because it's people out here that are master manipulators and they're actually really good at pretending. And the length of time that they're willing to devote to the the, the, the game is, whew, it's interesting. <laughs> mm, mm, yeah. But I think a lot of women are just desperate. Like, I'm sorry, y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> I think a lot of women are desperate and, and men, whether good or bad, can smell that. And um, a lot of times they attract vultures because it's, it's you know, it's like a smell that desperation has a smell, in my opinion, you know, and I think that that attracts vultures and, and scavengers. And that's kind of why it happens that way, unfortunately. Like I said, and everything I'm talking about is something that I've done. So I, I don't, I don't want to ever make it seem like I'm, holier than thou and self-righteous but in my healing journey i've learned that a lot of things could have been avoided if i really knew my own value and wasn't being desperate Mm, i love that that's that's good because i heard uh i've heard this literally out of the mouths of a lot of women in the dating process that Mm -hmm. sometimes it's easier to just have sex with a man that you don't want to be with long term but then you will make the guy that you really like wait. Mm. And I was like, help me. Is that like, help me understand that? Cause I was lost. I was just like, cause one thing I have learned over the years, Shay, is that I've, I've <laughs> learned to respect a woman's mindset and, and however she's thinking. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times when I'm asking questions, I'm asking out of ignorance, but does that make sense? Is that, is that, is that a common thread? I plead the fifth. <laughs> so it's true. Okay, so G- give me the give me the mindset because I'm maxing out of ignorance. Um, the mindset. Mm. It's all about protection, and women, especially women who have participated in fornication, mm. which is most of us out here <laughs> in these streets. <laughs> Um, they have their needs and their desires, you know, to once you kind of, for lack of a better word, you know, pop that pimple, you, now, you know, what the feeling of, you know, sexual pleasure is and and now you kind of crave it. Mm -hmm. And it is easier for a woman to detach her feelings for someone who she doesn't really like, which is. It's, it's definitely weird. I wouldn't say that this is smart. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it. One star would not recommend. But I ultimately I have felt this way before. Like it's easier to kind of just detach yourself from it and not be so invested. Like you if when you're invested, that's when that crazy stuff, that's when that crazy start popping up. Like if this is somebody who you really can see yourself with and you like them and you're like you know, and also you want to be respected. So this man who who I really actually like, I don't want him to sit here and think that, oh my God, like, damn, she gave it up to me this quick. So, you know, she probably doing this for everybody. You you know, you want to, to come off as valuing yourself and you want to also come off as someone who is respectable. But behind the scenes sometimes, 
you need that it's Christ. <laughs> I don't know. You need that it's Christ. And so it's like, okay, at least this person, I don't, I don't necessarily hate them, but they just, I don't see a future with them. It'll be easier for me to do this and not get attached and not get my feelings, you know, involved and keep it moving. You know, see you, see you next time when I call you type of situation. And like I said, I don't advise that, but it, it happens for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, I was just wondering because I'm like from a mind, from a man's perspective, we mm -hmm. you know, and and, and I understand because a lot of times women you can't win for losing. Like y'all have it bad when it comes to trying to be your authentic self without being judged. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I think that that's a certain level of self love that you have to accept for yourself and not care about what anybody else says because. Uh, it, it took me almost 40 years to get there. I'm like, I don't care what anybody say about me anymore. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm hoping people will get it earlier in life, but like, I don't care anymore. Like, whatever, you know. Yeah, for me, like, I like you said, it's definitely self-love. And it's just really when you really realize that people are going to talk regardless. They're going to talk regardless. Mm -hmm, they're yeah. literally going to say, if you're doing too good, they're going to say you think you're too good. If you're doing bad, they're going to talk about you and say you, you, you out here messed up so it's just you have to find that that peace within yourself to know that even if stuff is not working out even if stuff isn't um turning out the way you want to it's all a part of your growing process it's all growing pains and just act accordingly like i'm not about to let somebody who don't have their stuff together their opinion of me is I'm not gonna pay now what are these bills in here <laughs> yeah and I have plenty, so <laughs> it's like if you're not if you're not contributing anything positive or giving me authentic feedback, then your opinion is just words. And I, you know, and my I, thought process. No, I agree. I always tell people if if you're not helping me pay these bills and if we ain't sleeping together, I, I people come. What are we What are we even talking about? You can just keep that in, keep that inside inside. However you feel internalizing <laughs> yeah right because one minute people will love you you know they'll scream hosanna hosanna one day and then the next day they'll say crucify him Ooh, you know what i'm saying that the proof. Ain't yeah that the proof. they said they talked about jesus so how you think you any different <laughs> yeah right so it beware when all men speak well of you <laughs> I, I don't and you know that's very true i really i'm glad that you said that mm -hmm. I really, you know, and that's what I, when I mentioned the people pleasing part of it, I struggled with that for so long of just trying to make everyone like me and, and trying to kind of curtail all of my thoughts and opinions to be digestible. And now I'm just like, you can choke. I said what I said, you know, <laughs> I, I, I have a little tack with it, but overall, I said what I said, like, and if you don't agree with me, that's fine. I, I, I respect differences of, of opinions and I'm okay with that, but no longer will I, you know, water myself down in order for you to be able to, to, to deal. I know that's right. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Do you find that people just fall into relationships or do they take time to confirm? Do people even have relationships these days? That's what, and that's why I was asking because, <laughs> you know, and I guess I'm telling my age, but you know, back in the day, we would actually ask mm -hmm. uh, sometimes on pieces of paper, and we would say check yes or no. I know the kids good old nowadays. Days. Yeah, kids nowadays, they're like, "What's paper?" But anyway, What's paper. <laughs> a pen? What's a pen? But anyway. <laughs> um, I don't think that people actually have relationships okay so that's obviously that's not true so let me clarify what okay. i'm saying i feel like people are very much invested in situationships sneaky links and these blurred lines mm. they they love that because the gray area doesn't call for any clarity um it helps them sleep at night because yeah i've been sleeping with this man for two years but we never said we was together, so it it don't bother me that he's dating someone else or he's going out with someone else. When you know that it does bother you, but to console yourself, you stay in the gray. So instead of you asking or instead of you guys actually sitting down and discussing what the relationship is, the boundaries of it, you just stay in the gray because it's safe there and 
it helps you to justify um, being treated poorly or justify not having that stability and that safety that you really want. Yeah. Ultimately, I, I think men want the same thing when they're ready, of course. Yeah. But yeah. Overall, women want that stability and they want that title and they want to be chosen and, and feel special. And so a lot of times we, unfortunately, as women, trick ourselves into thinking that that's not as important as it is to us. And of course, I'm only speaking from my perspective. I don't know how every other woman feels, but I, I feel like I am, can confidently say that most women do want that stability and they and they would like to have a relationship. But fortunately, they just want to stay in the gray. The mm. gray is where it's safe. Yeah, there's no... You don't have to sign the contract per se. It's just kind of more of like willy nilly. It's like I can do what you. I can do what I want to do. You can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. No strings attached. Even though there will be feelings eventually, um, but you're gonna <laughs> compress your feelings. It's so weird to me because, like you said, a contract. Like that's really it's it's no contract. But unfortunately, a lot of times on the woman's side. Mm -hmm. they, act like it is a contract still it's like you haven't signed a contract you haven't stated that this is exclusive this is you know my one and only he hasn't told you you're my one and only i'm exclusive to you but you still go on to act as though you know it's like a, a lease mm. they're on month to month at this point but they're still acting like <laughs> <laughs> they're still acting like they lay locked in for you know a year or whatever it's just crazy to me but they <laughs> month to month, huh? They month to month at this point. Like the, the the landlord can raise the rent two times, you know, and they would still be. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's just weird to me how how easily we kind of cling to the thought of being in a relationship, and then we treat things that aren't relationships like they're relationships and wonder why we're getting hurt and why our feelings are being disregarded because this person hasn't committed to you mm. and probably don't have a plan to. They're just enjoying the benefits of you while you're there, while they're trying to look and find the person who they really want to be with. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, and then blast people on social media and say this and that, you know, this person is this and I can't stand when, and it's like, but you, and here's my here's my issue, Shay, because I'm like, we have to promote more of what we want to see. You know, what are we going to when are we going to get to a place where we're celebrating healthy relationships or we're celebrating what we want more of now? People complain about F boys and F girls and all this other stuff. But I'm like, but if you're promoting it. That's it's so it. strong. Everyone want to be toxic now. Mm -hmm. yeah. everyone wants to be toxic I saw something the other day and I was absolutely disgusted and disturbed um <laughs> this leg this guy put up a, a, a post saying like um something about when she gets on my nerve and I just want to choke her up and I'm in my mind I'm like I'm touching my girl like choke her up yeah <laughs> And I'm looking at the comments and the comments are filled with laugh emojis. And these are from women mm. saying, yeah, be like that. And yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes you gotta just yoke her up. And I'm just in my head, I'm like, what? This is crazy to me. Like, how are we so desensitized to violence and abuse and, you know, DV and things like that? How are we so desensitized for that to the point where it's a joke? It's mm -hmm. not a joke. A man telling me that he wants to choke me, I wouldn't care what we what we were, were talking about. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna check that right then and right there. You're not yeah. gonna choke anything here. You know what I mean? So it's just I don't know. It's disturbing to me to see how much people want to be toxic. How they want to be like a Jody and um, Yvette. Like they watch too much Baby Boy. They watch too much baby boy. That is not goals for me. That movie has nothing in it that I can take away. <laughs> yeah, right. At least what not to do. 
Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. But it's like <laughs> people like I wanna, I wanna be like them. Like what? That's what you. That's what you aspire to. Yeah, I'm frightened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was talking to my wife the other day. We were driving, and um, I said, uh, "I said, Are you happy with this boring life we have now?" Because she was telling me about past relationships and just mm-hmm. drama and stuff that she was dealing with growing up. And, and I said, "You happy with this boring marriage you got now?" She said, "I love boring." She yes. said, because I got to commit it. <laughs> she said, I ain't got to worry about Woo. you doing this and that. She was like, I love my boring little husband. <laughs> I, listen, nobody has time. You know how stressful it is to have to be on eggshells and wondering and worrying. And nobody has time for that. I mean, ultimately, ultimately we want to feel safe. And I, like I said, I, I think that's a human thing. I don't think that's a woman or a male thing. I I I, I think that we just want to feel safe as humans. Um. I think women probably aspire to it quicker, <laughs> but oh, I don't know. It's getting weird out here now these days. But in general, um, I think women want to to be locked in a lot quicker than guys sometimes do. But yes, the, the safety, the safety, and and the security that comes with having someone that gen, genuinely wants to be there for you and cares about you and cares about your your boundaries and making you happy and and vice versa you know the reciprocity that comes with that like that's unmatched boring boring is great <laughs> coast y'all are coasting you, know, you get what i'm saying like it's just you on cruise control and you're just enjoying and sometimes you might you know take it off cruise control and, and push the pedal and sometimes you might cruise but you just have a, a, a good flow and i think that's ultimately what we're all looking for mm-hmm. I, I hear you on that one. That's the truth. Uh, as a as a single person, how do you feel about dating multiple people at one time? How do you? I feel don't have that? the attention span for. <laughs> 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 I have tried, you know, and I think that I did myself a big disservice. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I think I've done myself a big disservice by not doing it. Mm-hmm. But I really don't have the attention span for it. Like, oof. I remember getting on dating sites, um, this is years ago, but just being overwhelmed, like (laughs) this is a lot. And so I'm just thinking about trying to get to know someone and trying to remember the facts of their life and, and, you know, the things that they're telling me and then having to talk to someone else and remember the facts of their life and not getting it mixed up. And, you know, it seems like a lot of work. I do see the value in it and I do see people who, do it well and are able to um kind of navigate that but for myself personally it's just not in my wheelhouse I, I i don't have the capacity i will date one person and see if they're a good fit if they're not i will move on to the next person and see if they're a good fit but doing it two, two at a time two three four you know my, my brain my ram <laughs> i can't keep that much information in my head <laughs> I, w- I would be going crazy trying to keep up with the details and I would it wouldn't be a personalized experience for me mm-hmm. no I hear you because I and I always tell people too I, I didn't have a mental bandwidth like mm-hmm. I tried before and contrary to popular belief once upon a time in my life I was single yeah um, I didn't come out the womb married but <laughs> uh, believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> yeah right but to remember birthdays and remember your son's name or your daughter's name and remember Ooh. your likes and your love language. I, I'm stressed. <laughs> I can't keep up with the woman I have. No, we've been married almost five years. Listen. So, I, yeah, and to each his own, because some people, they, I had a lady on, on I interviewed the other day and she talked about dating multiple people. Mm-hmm. But me personally, I just don't have it. I try and it's just like, who are you talking about? I'm like, oh, that's Lisa, not Teresa. Right. Like, do they have a spreadsheet or something? Like, how do they keep up with that? I really want to know because I, I promise you, I, I think my mind just goes, my mind is already just spinning all the time as it is. But like, to really keep up with the details, like I would really, like, I would not have, I wouldn't be able to give a personalized experience. Like, I would literally just have to be there and be surface level. Like, how can you even get deep with someone if you aren't I, I don't know like you said to each their own right but for myself personally no i i'm 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 gonna 
Uh, one in one in one in one, but <laughs> no multiples. <laughs> so what happens? So let's just say Shay is going on about her business and you're talking to this one guy. Mm -hmm. um, y'all cool. Y'all been talking for about two months. Mm -hmm. But say all of a sudden somebody else pops up, I don't know, through social media, maybe, I don't know. And mm -hmm. they, you know, you find them interesting. What do you do? Do you take them on both or do you kind of like... Cause somebody else might just happen to stumble upon your life and now you find yourself like oh he's attractive but now all of a sudden he has these other traits i like too but you're already talking to one person what do you do that's happened to me before in the past um mm. as a as a grown grown woman i i really have a hard time liking people um that quickly like <laughs> <laughs> it takes years I, the space between the time of me liking people uh, actually like genuinely liking them you know for a relationship type of situation it usually takes a little bit of time for me to find that but it has happened to me before and i mean i've always been honest about it uh especially if there is not like an exclusive situation or anything like that like um what I personally did was say, hey, you know, I know that we're talking, we haven't made anything, haven't made anything official. Um, um, there's multiple people pursuing me right now and there's someone in particular who I am, you know, really interested in. And, the, and I think honesty is the best policy, honestly. Like, I know that it's not always what people want to hear, but I think it's the best policy. And the guy took it, extremely well um he understood it i actually did wind up on <laughs> being in a very long-term relationship with the person who i <laughs> who i was interested in so i mean i guess it worked out for me <laughs> mm. <laughs> but oh well, that's what's up then but uh and like i said as an adult like as a super super grown woman now um <clears throat> i find it hard and, and i'm not saying that it's impossible you know god is good and and all the time you know but i i find it hard to i i don't i'm not a person that is easily impressed so um for me to find someone at the same time two people at the same time that i'm interested in that is like that's, that's be rare a, yeah that's real <laughs> rare it's, it's real real rare nice. <laughs> I, it's I mean, my most of my relationships, I, I take breaks, like long breaks in between them, like because just not be not finding people who actually, you know, interest me in that way. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. No, I, I appreciate you taking the time to be a guest on today's show. I, I want to yes. first of all acknowledge you for um, being honest about your personal life, uh, acknowledge you for starting your YouTube channel and to share a lot of personal things that you have going on because i feel like i know you just from watching your channel well, and i know it you. takes a certain amount of bravery to do that uh, so i want to acknowledge you for those things and acknowledge your overall growth and your spirituality because again i can hear it in your channel um, and willing to be an agent of change because it's easy to just kind of flow with the crowd you know so i i get that so i just want to acknowledge you for those things let the brave hearts community know how they can get in touch with shay so you guys i actually um my podcast is available on well the platform is anchor so you can find it level uploading fight filling space facts i'm also on youtube um this channel is called level uploading um instagram it's at shea butter baby <laughs> hopefully our, our good editor can uh, include that because <laughs> i don't like spelling it but yeah you guys can reach out i'm always um open to to suggestions and talking and anything like that mm -hmm. all right all right well that's what's up brave arts community you heard it here make sure you go and check out shay i'm subscribed to her channel you should too um, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this video with a friend because you never know who need this kind of content. I know everybody smiles on their pictures on social media, but you don't know what goes on when the camera is off. So you never know who needs this video. If you are listening via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. And that way it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? I'll give you a shout out on the show as well. This is Sean Heineman that is scared to marry, wanting you to love fearlessly with special guests. Shay. <laughs> All right, people. Take care. <laughs>